what's the difference between eating one meal a day on a ketogenic diet versus a one meal a day on a high carb diet? Is it all or nothing on keto or do you still need to eat some carbs to survive? This video is gonna be the ultimate brawl between OMAD keto and OMAD carbs. The battle begins! <laughs> There is indeed a huge difference between eating OMAD on keto and OMAD with carbs. Not only in the macronutrient ratios, but also what kind of a physiological state your body is in. In reality, there are only two kinds of diets. A ketogenic diet is a low-carb, high-fat diet that puts you into a state of ketosis and makes your body use fat as an alternative to glucose. General keto macros are somewhere between 5-10% to carbs, 20 to 30 percent protein and 65 to 80 percent fat all the other diets can be categorized as non-ketogenic diets and they have a wide variety of macronutrient ratios a high carb diet can be categorized as anything that has carbs exceeding the 60 to 70 percent it's low fat low protein high carb High carb vegan diets can also reach 80% carbohydrates, 10% fat and 10% protein. A semi high carb diet has carbs being around the 60% with slightly more protein but still low fat. This is something along the lines of the mainstream fitness diet. A semi low carb diet is something like paleo or the Mediterranean diet where your carbs are at less than 50%. You're eating more protein and fat but you're still burning glucose as a primary fuel source. A low carb diet is somewhat ketogenic as you'll be eating very few carbs, usually less than 100 grams, but you're not in full blown ketosis all the time. A real ketogenic diet is unique in the sense that you're in a completely distinctive metabolic state. Even if you're eating a high carb diet or a semi low carb diet, you're still using the same fuel source, which is glucose as a primary fuel source. Oh man. You don't need to be in ketosis to reap the benefits of ketosis, as crazy as it may sound. You simply want to prime your body to become more keto adapted and increase the efficiency at which you can use fat as a primary fuel source. This can be achieved to a certain extent on a non-ketogenic diet, but to actually induce keto adaptation, then you need to get into ketosis at least to a certain period of time. It's necessary. If you're eating a diet that has over 50% of the calories coming from carbohydrates, then in order to get into ketosis, then you need to either fast for two to three days in a row or restrict your carbohydrate intake for a few weeks. You can also deplete liver glycogen with exercise, especially if you're doing it fasted. Therefore, you can experience transient ketosis more frequently when on a very strenuous workout routine, even if you're eating a high carb diet. Nice. In the case of eating one meal a day, OMAD on keto is going to keep you in a very deep fasted state most of the day and you're going to be burning a lot of fat and ketones for fuel. Oh hell yeah! Eating OMAD on a non-ketogenic diet is going to kick you out of ketosis because glucose and carbohydrates they're going to inhibit ketosis. Ah oh, man! During that feeding period. Whether or not you're going to get kicked out of ketosis so far that you're going to lose keto adaptation depends on your lean body mass how much muscle glycogen you have, how did you exercise, how many carbohydrates you ate, and what's your insulin sensitivity. If you're eating 200 to 400 grams of carbs, you're gonna refill your glycogen stores, which will definitely inhibit ketosis, possibly for the coming few days. If you're eating about 100 to 200 grams of carbs, then you may be in mild ketosis by the next evening, depending on your activity levels and glycogen stores. If you're eating less than 100 grams of carbs while exercising and within a very narrow time frame like an hour, then you can potentially get back into ketosis by the next morning. Possibly. If you are eating a one meal a day diet, then you're gonna spend most of the day in a fasted state, which by its very nature is ketogenic. Fasting is one of the best ways of inducing ketosis. And if you combine it with exercise, then you're definitely gonna be producing a lot of ketones and burning a ton of fat. This is gonna create this sort of a buffer zone where you can consume slightly more carbohydrates while still maintaining ketosis. And again, how many carbohydrates you can tolerate depends on your level of keto adaptation, your muscle mass, training, insulin, blood sugar, what carbs you ate, and so on. Everything is a matter of context and timing. Yep. But there are many other differences besides ketosis when we compare OMAD with keto and OMAD with carbs. On a keto diet, because you're already in ketosis, it makes it easier for your body to use its own body fat for fuel. 
thus you preserve muscle mass and hunger. This is gonna lower the body's demands for glucose and your brain gets access to a continuous supply of energy coming in from your own body fat. Kaching unlimited energy! Yeah! On a high carb diet, you'll definitely feel slightly hungrier than if you were to be eating fewer carbohydrates. The reason is that the body hasn't completely adapted to the abstinence of glucose and as soon as your body's glucose stores run out, you'll run into a small energy crisis. If you're less keto adapted, you'll also experience higher rates of gluconeogenesis of muscle tissue. That's definitely not a good thing because you'll end up losing your muscle and other vital organs. But it's not guaranteed to happen either. If you're consuming enough of the essential amino acids and you're eating enough protein during the feeding phase, then it's gonna have a slightly more protective effect on your body. Gluconeogenesis on a high carb diet is more likely to happen if you're at a caloric deficit because your body is already struggling with getting the amino acids. Therefore, if you're eating at a surplus of calories, then you have no worries, even on OMAD. If you're eating a semi-low carb diet like paleo, you'll generally feel fine. And if you exercise on a faster state, you'll enter into deeper ketosis quite fast. The problem is that if you work out too hard for too long, your body will be still forced to eventually start breaking down its muscle to fuel glycolytic activities. Low intensity activities already burn primarily fat, even on a higher carb diet. As you become keto adapted, you increase the rate of intensity at which you can burn fat for fuel, which is also going to protect your muscles against gluconeogenesis even more. Doing OMADs on a high carb diet is gonna make you fat adapted to a very small degree. As long as you're fasting for the majority of the day and as long as you're not consuming processed carbs, high amounts of fructose, sugars and other inflammatory foods, then you would still be producing a slight amount of ketones during your fasting window and you can actually use them for energy. Possibly. It's just that if you were to do it on a low carb diet, then you would be much more effective at using those ketones for fuel and you wouldn't waste them. You would have reduced gluconeogenesis, you would have increased fat burning and you would have increased mental clarity as well. Possibly. But like I also said, being in ketosis isn't the only reason for doing OMAD. Let's talk about autophagy and OMAD. Autophagy is the cellular cleansing process that makes you recycle old, worn out cellular debris into energy. Eating one meal a day isn't enough to trigger significant amounts of autophagy because you would have to fast for two to three days. However, you may still experience trace amounts of autophagy and self-recycling to a small degree. Autophagy activates through the fuel sensor AMPK, which increases under nutrient deprivation, Caloric restriction, exercise, cold thermogenesis, carbohydrate restriction, and certain foods can increase AMPK, thus promoting autophagy as well. Autophagy gets inhibited by mTOR, which is the body's growth pathway that signals the presence of nutrients. mTOR gets activated by insulin, glucose, amino acids, and even resistance exercise. mTOR is tissue-specific, just like autophagy, and it happens to a different degree in different parts of the body all the time. And even though too high levels of mTOR are associated with cancer growth, it's not a bad thing. You need mTOR to maintain your muscle mass and longevity. And the same thing applies to autophagy as well. Autophagy is a good thing, but too much autophagy all the time will lead to starvation. On a ketogenic diet, you're experiencing slightly more autophagy because of the increase increased AMPK and lower mTOR. And if you combine it with OMAD, then you can actually maintain quite significant levels of autophagy even during the day. On a high carb diet, you're not gonna tap into full blown autophagy with OMAD. You would have to still fast for two to three days all the time. Oh, man. But if you combine it with a longer fasting window that incorporates fasted exercise, moderate protein, lower levels of carbohydrates, and some other autophagy boosting foods, then you can induce autophagy to a very small degree, but it's quite minute. Foods that boost autophagy are coffee, green tea, turmeric, ginseng, ginger, apple cider vinegar, moringa, elderberries, blueberries, sulforaphane, vegetables, coconut oil, berberine, and olive oil leaf extract. Of course, if you're going to consume these foods during your one meal a day, then you're going to definitely inhibit autophagy for the time being, but chances are you're going to elevate it back faster the next day as well. On a high carb diet, you'd have to be managing insulin in the evening and doing fasted cardio while continuing to fast for a few hours post-workout to activate autophagy. So I'm going to now give you the pros and cons of doing OMAD on keto and OMAD with carbs. It's pros and cons time. Pros of OMAD on keto. 
It's very easy to maintain and you'll have less hunger. Your energy levels will be more stable and you experience fewer blood sugar swings whether because of moving around or standing up too fast. It's also much more effective for losing weight because you'll maintain more muscle and burn more fat at a caloric deficit. You don't have to fear gluconeogenesis of your lean tissue that much. The cons of Omar on Keto You may struggle with getting enough fiber or other micronutrients if you're eating at such a small time frame. Signs of chronic fatigue or muscle weakness may indicate that you're not getting enough electrolytes or other minerals. That's why it's important to be consuming some salted water during the fasting window. On keto, you also want to make sure that the one meal you do eat has high quality nutrients, not just a big chunk of keto friendly processed foods or just bacon. I don't even know if I like bacon. <laughs> the pros of OMAD with carbs. You can eat a lot more food with different micronutrients and it may be digested easier depending on what food you actually eat. Carbs on OMAD can also refill muscle glycogen, which can have a performance enhancing effect, especially if you're trying to build muscle. You don't need carbs to replenish muscle glycogen, and you can successfully do it by converting fatty acids into glucose through the same process of gluconeogenesis, but with a small number of carbs, you can assist the process. Consuming carbs on OMAD while still staying in ketosis by the next morning can happen only if you're doing exercise that depletes your muscle glycogen. If you eat carbs with full muscle glycogen, then the only thing that separates you from ketosis is your liver glycogen. The liver can store about 100 to 150 grams of glycogen, and it takes about 24 hours to deplete it. So, if you deplete your liver glycogen with exercise, and even tap into some muscle glycogen, then you can maintain ketosis by eating about 100 grams of carbs, because those carbs will be used to replenish those muscle glycogen stores. You want to keep liver glycogen as low as possible because you won't start producing ketone bodies if the liver is even as little as 50% full of glycogen. The cons of OMAD with carbs. You may have less energy during the fasting window and you'll burn less fat. The biggest danger to this is that if you're being physically very active in a fasted state, especially with something that is higher intensity, you'll be more prone to muscle gluconeogenesis that's gonna make you burn muscle. That's why a lot of people think they need BCAs, just so they could prevent muscle catabolism. The truth is that fasting ketosis is much more protective of muscle mass than BCAs, because BCAs are gonna spike insulin, they're gonna break the fasted state, and they'll actually make you more catabolic. If you were to be more keto adapted and in a deeper state of ketosis, you'd have a much more protein sparing effect on your entire body. Eating very high carb on OMAD can also be quite bad for your blood sugar levels. Fasting lowers blood sugar and makes you more insulin sensitive, but one massive spike of 200 to 300 grams of carbs at night may still have a negative side effect on your health and how you'll feel the next day. If you're training hard, then it can help to build muscle but there's definitely some trade-off in your longevity. With that being said, eating high carb on OMAD is definitely much healthier than eating high carb several meals a day because you'll be having fewer insulin spikes and the fasting is gonna lower your blood glucose. You would still want to restrict your carbohydrates as much as possible as to keep yourself in this deeper state of ketosis and stimulate autophagy. Yep. In my opinion, if you're already eating keto, then it's not as important to be eating OMAD than if you were to be eating a high carb diet. Intermittent fasting is such a powerful way of boosting your fat burning and promoting longevity as well, so you would still want to fast as long as you can every day. Are you sure? For overall health and performance, you want to maintain stable blood sugar levels, lower levels of insulin, and to dip into fasting ketosis more frequently. That's why I think it's still a very good idea to restrict your carbohydrate intake to at least most of the time. If your glycogen stores are already full and you haven't exercised, then there's practically no reason to be consuming carbohydrates. And you would much better off be either to eat a low carb keto or to fast entirely. Oh man! And whenever you do eat carbs, then those carbs will be used to replenish your body's glycogen stores, not as fat storage. Possibly. So there's still quite a significant difference between OMAD on keto and OMAD on high carbs. But in general, the main message is that Fasting is much more important than choosing whether or not something is better or not. Possibly means we might, we might not. In my opinion, the best diet for OMADs would be something along the lines of either a keto diet or a semi-low-carb keto diet, where you consume maybe like slightly less than 100 grams of carbs on harder workout days and still maintain ketosis. 
We won. But <laughs> let me know in the comments what do you think is better for Umad, high carb or keto? Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay fasting, stay empowered.